Hi, let's do a little more practice on determining rate constant. Um, so we determined that the rate equation, um, the rate law for two moles of NO plus one mole of O2 yielding two moles of NO2, here it is, is an overall third order, two plus one is three, so third order, the NO second order, the O2 is first order. And the question would be, what's the rate constant? Um, so once you find the rate law, finding rate constant again, that's really easy. All you have to do is pick one of the experiments and plug it in. Take one of those trials and plug it in. The K value will be the same for all of them. It doesn't matter which one you choose. Just out of habit, I usually take the first trial. Um, so let's take trial one and I'm going to plug in this information into our rate law. So the rate is 0 0.028 equals K times concentration of O2 squared, second order, times the concentration of 0 0.01, first order. Notice we have one unknown. It's K, the rate constant. So let's go ahead and do our math. Um, let's see, when we multiply all of this, so 0 0.02 squared times 0 0.01, we're going to get K um, times 4 times 10 to the minus 6 equals 0 0.028. So just a little bit of algebra, let's divide both sides by four times 10 to the minus six, divide by four times 10 to the minus six, and K will equal 7,000. Let's see. So these actually had zeros on them. It was two sig figs, I didn't write it out. Let's write this as two sig figs. I'll write it up here. K equals 7.0 times 10 to the three. And that should be showing two sig figs if I had a zero on the end of all of these. Um, Okay, now equally important in determining the number is determining the unit, determining the unit. So this is how I have my students do it. I want you to go back and only write down the units for everything you have. Now, uh, rate, you know, it has to be molarity per second. They gave that to us, molarity per second. Recall your book might do moles over liter. Remember that's molarity times second. Those are the same thing. I think this is just a little bit cleaner. I always write it um, molarity over second. Equals some unit. Okay, we don't know what the unit of K is. One of the significant purposes of K is just to adjust units. Um, so we need to find the unit for K times, okay, those brackets, those brackets right there, it's a code in chemistry, meaning concentration, molarity. Very specifically, those brackets mean molarity. So this is going to be molarity squared. So it'd be like that's molarity squared times molarity to the first. So remember, molarity squared times molarity, you add exponents, that would be molarity cubed. Okay, you're good. So here's the big question. What do I have to put right here for the unit on K? Then when I multiply it by molarity cubed, I end up with molarity per second. Um, I'm going to rewrite this so you can see it just a little bit cleaner. This would become molarity cubed, like that. Well, I would need a second in the denominator, and I only need a molarity to the power of one. This is to the power of three. So I'd have to put molarity squared. Molarity squared would cancel two of those and leave one. So one times molarity to the one divided by second. There it is, molarity per second, molarity per second. So the unit on K is going to be the 7.0 times 10 to the three per molarity squared times second. In looking at 20 years of FRQs published by AP, there's only one time that I saw they didn't give a point for the unit. Always write the unit. If you're asked for the rate constant, there's a really, really good chance you'll get at least one point for having the correct unit. Correct number one point, correct unit one point. So there's your unit on that. Okay, nice, good review. Pretty straightforward to find rate constant. Pick any trial or um, plug it into the rate equation, then be really careful. Plug in the unit so you can find the unit of K. All right, have a good day, thank you.